Good morning. Happy Thursday. It's time to get real. How's my real life family doing today? I'm doing good. I slept in till six, so I needed some sleep. We're going to talk about how you do have time to sleep and you do have time for everything. I am fitting it all in right now. I've been working working out, doing my podcasts, reading, spending time with my kids, spending time with my family, going out with friends, taking care of the house, taking care of personal business, like so many things I've been fitting in. Um, I mean, Monday was an 18 hour day, (laughs) which is not typical. I don't typically have an 18 hour day, but in order to get it all in that day, it needed to be an 18 hour day, but that's okay. I would, I'd rather spend my time being productive and working on things that I know are going to make me feel good than, you know, wasting my time and feeling bad about myself. So that is today's topic. It's about time. It's about time that we stop saying we don't have enough time. We all have the same amount of time. We have 24 hours in the day. We don't all use it the same but we all have the same amount of time. I cannot tell you the amount of times, probably like 1 million, that I have heard, yeah, but I don't have time for that. Yeah, but I'm too busy. Yeah, but you don't understand. There's no way I can fit that in. Yes, I need help with time management. And then I try to give suggestions And there's always a million excuses why nothing can change. And I really just want to roll my eyes and be like, um, sounds like you don't want help, but I don't say that. So to me, like when you say you don't have time, that sounds like an excuse to not do the things that you know you need to do. If that's the case for you, and probably it is, Go back and watch the no excuses video from August 30th. I can give you some, I talk about having no excuses. Now, I get it. There are times that it is not an excuse. You really just don't have the time that day. And some days you won't have time for everything. And that's fine. But you can't make that be most days. Most days you do have time to fit it in. And work towards your purpose if you do some proper planning and then go watch the have a plan video too. I mean, we've talked about all these topics. And so this is what I'm telling you today is not going to be anything that we haven't discussed in how to make this happen. Okay. So first I thought I'd tackle all the things that most of us need time for. And this is just in general and I use myself for an example for most of it because I know myself the best. So you have to see yourself in what I'm telling you. Okay, so what is it that we need time for? For me, the house. I would say, well, I'll just go down the list first. We need time to take care of the house, take care of the kids, spend time with your significant other, work, uh, church, yourself and sleep. So those are the big categories that I put in there. So now I've broken it down into to maybe how much time we need each day to spend on those things. So for the house, I put two hours and that could be cleaning, laundry, cooking, grocery shopping, anything that has to do with taking care of your house. For the kids, I also put two hours, you know, driving them around, helping them with homework, having fun with them. Of course, you want to have fun with them as well whatever we need to do to take care of the kids. Significant other. So spend an hour, you know, you want to have time with your significant other. So I put an hour, maybe talking, um, connecting, whatever. I called it connecting. Anyway, uh, work, nine hours. So that is for maybe your commute to work and the time you spend at work. So that's if you work outside the home, there's your work time. If you work from home, there's your work time. If you stay at home and work, maybe your job is to take care of the kids. You, you Now you've got another nine hours to do that. So whatever work is for you, that's what that means. Church. So I put an hour, uh, Bible study, volunteering, whatever it is that you do for that. Yourself. 
I put an hour for that. And that could be exercise or personal growth or that me time. Remember that me time we talked about from September 11th? Go rewatch that video too. So yourself, you need an hour. And then sleep, I put eight hours. And some we need about seven to nine hours of sleep. Some of us more, some of us less. So that is kind of, I think, what we need time for every day. And boom, if you add all that up, House, kids, significant other, work, church, yourself, and sleep. Two hours, two hours, one hour, nine hour, one hour, one hour, eight hours. It equals 24 hours in a day. So that is kind of a daily average of all the things that we need time for. And there's a description here in this video too, so check it out. Of course, that's an average. Some days you're going to spend more time with the kids than on their activities than others. Maybe you're watching a game instead of just running them to practice. Someday, maybe you will need more time for work. You have to spend a few more hours at work. Some days you might need to spend a little more time on the house. But on average, I, I broke it down to see that we do have time to get in everything that we need to do, but you are gonna have to adjust based on whatever that day brings. So how do you find the time how do you manage your time actually so we all have the time and we're going to spend time on what's important to us but we have to manage our time in order to be able to do that so we have to have a plan we have to be prepared i did a video on that too go watch that so how do you manage your time? I do, for me, let lists, 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 lots of lists so that I don't forget what I need to do. I've got, oh, I'm not gonna grab it right now, but there's a list over there. You, you guys remember, I told you, I just have a running list of everything I need to do. And then I kind of, it's like my little office counter at home. I have a calendar of all the things that I need to make time for so that I can look at my day and say, oh, okay, I've got a doctor's appointment. There's no way that I can, move that so I'm gonna to have to manipulate the rest of my day around that so just getting those big important non-negotiable things in and then having a running list of all the things that you need to do so that when you have a few minutes and you're thinking what could I use this time for look at your list and check something off okay I think knowing if you're a morning person or a night person is really important and I'm a morning person for sure go back and watch the be a morning person video from September 3rd because mornings are very important. However, if you're more productive in the evening, well, fine, that's fine. Shift your time schedule or your hours of operation, if you will, until later in the evening. But know when you're the most productive, when you're the most energetic, maybe I should say, and do your big tasks then. Have a calendar, I already talked about that. I don't care what kind of calendar you use, if it's in the phone or on the table or whatever. Have a calendar, keep yourself organized. Organization is so very important. This is the, this is the big one, to kind of stick to a schedule. When you have it all planned out and you, you stick to it and you have, you have an itinerary for your day, so to speak, you don't feel like you're just flailing all around. And so I'm gonna kind of just describe to you my typical daily schedule, and that's gonna be your action step for today, and we'll get to that in a minute. But you need to have a daily schedule and then kind of a weekly schedule. So I'm gonna go over both of those things for me with you, so maybe you can get some ideas on how to manage this. So for me, um, I'll buzz through it because you can read it in the description. But from 4 to 4.30 a.m., I throw in laundry and do general clean up around the house, brush my teeth, get ready, uh, get dressed, all of that. From 4.30 to 5, I commute to my workout and listen to my motivational podcast. From 5 to 6 a.m., I work out. From 6 to 6.30 a.m., I commute home and finish listening to my motivational podcast. From 6.30 to 7, I shower and get ready for work. From 7 to 7.30, I typically do any like I pay bills or and I record my little Facebook live video I do all of that from 7 to 7 30 from 7 30 to about 5 15 p.m. so 7 30 a.m. to 5 15 p.m. is work so that that includes you know driving to work being at work driving home from work from 5 15 p.m. to 6 p.m. eat dinner and then if the girls are here I'll catch up with them see how their day was all of that from 6 to 7 I'll try to make any personal phone calls that I need to make answer emails and catch up on all of my Facebook 
uh, comments and messages and stuff from my, my real life stuff from seven to eight is when I typically PM, I typically prep for the next day. That's making my lunch, setting up the coffee, um, making sure that I have all the food I'm going to eat for the next day, setting my clothes out, finishing the laundry that I started earlier, any housework, any random things that are around that need to be tended to, I'll do that. And I do all that while I'm talking on the phone to friends and family, just seeing what happened with them for the day. And then from 8 to 9 p.m., I read and then I watch TV and I drink wine because <laughs> that's important. And then for at 9 o'clock, I'm typically sleeping until four o'clock the next day. So that's seven hours of sleep. So that's kind of how a typical day goes. Well, actually that's how a typical Monday, Wednesday, and Friday goes. So now let's go into my weekly schedule. Weekly schedule, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is kind of everything I just told you. Tuesday, Thursday is everything I just told you, but instead of going to work, I do two podcasts and any appointments or anything big that needs to be taken care of. Um, and then Saturdays, so that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for me, Saturdays, I do my podcast in the morning, of course, work out and all that. And I'll typically do yard work, any outside work that needs to be done. And then Saturday night's fun night. So just, you know, making plans, hanging out with people. And then Sundays is for church. That's a lie. I haven't been to church in like a month. So mostly for church and then family and weekly prep. So I set up my week uh, so that I don't have to, you know, like food prep and what I'm going to talk about for my podcast. I kind of do my planning for the week on Sunday. So that's how my daily and weekly schedule goes. And it works pretty well. So there have been a lot of different daily and weekly schedules throughout my life when you know, when I work full time and then when I started staying home with the kids and only working part time until now. So everything has kind of changed, but I always have a plan as to how I'm going to manage my day and my week so I can fit it all in. Another time, don't procrastinate. If you wait to do everything until later, later is probably never going to come and you really won't have time to do everything if you save, you know, 24 hours worth of work for the one hour that you have left. Of course, you're not going to have time if you procrastinate. Do things right away when possible. Check it off the list. And I find I'm best with this when I'm busy, when I'm busy, when I got that momentum of get things done, get things done. I am not a procrastinator. When it's kind of like more of like a downtime, maybe. I don't know how to say it, but my life doesn't seem quite so busy. I will tend to procrastinate more. So you've heard that phrase, if you want something done, ask a busy person. It's that, you know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. That theory, I think it's the theory of inertia, that tends to be true for me. So get in the groove and get going, people. Don't procrastinate. Please don't forget. Don't say I forgot. There are so many ways to not forget. I do not have a great short-term memory. I do not have a great long-term memory. You know what I do? I write it down on my calendar. I text myself messages. I make notes in my phone. And then I review them daily to see what is it that I need to do? What is it that I say I was going to do? Who did I say I was going to do this with? And what did I say I was going to do for that person? I will even write on my calendar, check in with so-and-so so that I don't forget, you know, maybe they had an important day and I don't want to forget to check in with them. I'll write that right on my calendar. So make little notes to yourself. When you're overwhelmed, step back and then come back. So there are days that it is going to get, you know, like you can't breathe, like I just don't have time for everything. And like I said earlier, those days are sometimes going to happen. Can't be your every day, but those days will sometimes happen. You need to take a breath and step back, you know, take five minutes to just have some silence, do some deep breathing, regroup, and, you know, come back, come back and look at it with some fresh eyes. So when you're giving, getting overwhelmed, just take a step back. Don't take a, don't take like a leap back, just a quick step back, gain your, gain your composure and then come back to it. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. You guys, where was I? 
Oh, delegate to family and friends if you can. If you can if you can have your kids fold towels for you, have them do it. If you can if you have an older teenager who can pick up a younger kid from their practice, you know, have them do it. If you can, maybe you want to hire somebody. Maybe you have the 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 finances to hire somebody to clean your house. Well, great, do it. Don't complain about it though when they don't do it the way that you want it done and say, well, fine, I'll just do it myself. Worry about the big things. Don't worry about the little things. Let them do it their way. As long as it's getting done and you don't have to do it and you have time to do other things that only you can do, let it go. Sometimes you have to say no. I know this is a hard one for some of us. There was a time that I was the everything at my kids' school. I was the PTA president. I was that mom that volunteered for everything. I was the one that was at every event. I was the one that organized and, and just was ultra involved. There came a time when that wasn't serving me well and I needed to step back and say no. So there was a time that I did everything, all the yes, saying all the yes, and then I found that I was letting other things slip through the cracks. And so I had to start saying no sometimes. And so when you're saying no to one thing, you have to say, is this really the most valuable thing for me to be spending time, time on? Is this contributing to my real life purpose? You know, and if the answer is no, then you have to say no to those things. And don't feel guilty about it. And then don't get caught up in social media, unless it's your job. Unless it's your job to be posting on Facebook for your job or, you know, Instagram or whatever. You don't have to send 300 Snapchats a day. You don't have to have streaks on Snapchat. You don't. That's a time waster. As soon as somebody messages you or texts you or emails you, unless it's for work and it's you're on a deadline or something, it is not important. That is such a time killer to be checking your notifications all day, every day. So my, like, what did I say? I think from six to seven is when I catch up on, like, in that time frame, that's when I will go and I will answer all of the stuff that, you know, all the notifications, I'll clear my phone notification. If I'm at lunch and work sometimes, sometimes I'll catch up with it then, but it can't be your all day, every day. That is not the most important thing in your life. That is not your purpose is to Snapchat someone. That's not your purpose. So you will make time for what is important to you. I am a very firm believer in that. If it is important enough to you, you will make time for it. If it is not, you will make an excuse not to do it. I hope that doesn't sound, well, I don't care if it sounds harsh, actually. Maybe it does sound harsh, but you have to actually ask yourself for you if that's true. So you also have to determine what your non-negotiables are. There are some things that you must fit in all the time, things that you're not willing to give up. And so you have to decide what that is for you. So I'll tell you some things for me, for my personal, personal things that I need to spend my time on that I'm not willing to give up. Eating well, exercise, time with my kids, having a clean house and doing the laundry and time with my family and friends. Those are things I'm not willing to give up. If I, I mean, the whole house thing, I cannot walk into a messy house. It freaks me out. And then I can't focus on anything else. So I just think, I find it easiest just to keep up on that daily. And I'm not willing to negotiate with that. Maybe you don't care and that's fine. But for me, I hate it. For work, non-negotiables. My podcast, doing this podcast every day. I I don't have time to record it every day, but I do have time to release it every day. So on some days I have to do two in order to get it out for the next day. But I am not willing to negotiate with that because this is my purpose. You can, I have gotten the nicest emails, the most heartfelt. I can't, yesterday was a great day in terms of feedback and just validation. These, these beautiful women telling me how much what I'm doing is helping them. Yeah, that's my purpose and I'm not willing to give up on that. And then working to make money, we have to do that. And so that's non-negotiable Two, until I can find a way to make money with this, got to go out and work and make some money. So, so you have to decide what you're willing to give up 
and what you're absolutely not willing to give up or what you're not willing to give up and then what you are willing to give up. And so for me, for me, what I'm willing to give up, you have to give on some things for personal, personal time. I am willing to give up on my hair and makeup. Look at guys. This is, you guys see what I look like every single day. Hair, makeup, none. It's what it is. I figure I only have so much time to spend on my personal appearance and I would rather use, I'd rather spend it on exercise and fitness. So that's what you get right there. So hair and makeup, I don't care. Um, sitting at the table to eat, I've, we've given that up. I don't, that's probably not the wisest thing to do in order to keep family connection, but we don't really sit down at the table and eat anymore. And then scrolling social media, I had to give that up too. I love doing that. It just wasn't, wasn't serving any purpose whatsoever. It's just wasting my time. Other for work, things I was willing to give up in the different jobs that I've had. And even now, sometimes I gave up saying yes to things that I know I couldn't give 100% to. If I knew that there was a super important thing I needed to get done, and then if I took on something else, it would take away from that super important thing, I'd have to say no to it. So that kind of goes back to that theory of having to say no sometimes. And then other things I was willing to give up, working on things that are meaningless to me. So I guess the, the most recent example I could, I can think of, of for that is I was looking for a job and I found this job and it was, you know, it's a fine job, but it was a very repetitious kind of factory style job. I did not see that serving my purpose. That is meaningless to me. There is nothing there that I'm contributing to the world in any way, shape or form. And so I, I took the job, but continued to look for a different job. And so I found a different job and it is so much more suited uh, to me and what I think my purpose is. And so, plus it's just a lot more enjoyable. So yeah, I had to, I don't want to spend hours and hours on things that are meaningless to me. So if you're stuck in kind of like this dead end job, you know, you might have to keep it for now, but in your other time during your me time, you should be figuring out what else it is that you can do so that you don't feel like you're wasting your life. So anyway, all right. So what I need you to remember, and this was a quote by Robin Sharma, time management is life management. If you're not managing your time, you're not managing your life. So we must manage ourselves and our time in order to create this real life that we're after. And so that's what I want your action steps to be for today is to make a daily schedule and to make a weekly schedule. Take some of your time, maybe some of your me time today, and work on a daily schedule and a weekly schedule that you can kind of follow so you can get used to scheduling your time, managing your time so that you can fit it all in. Feel proud of yourself and work towards whatever your real purpose is. And then as always, please like, follow, share, and subscribe, and then turn, tune in tomorrow to talk about how your attitude affects everything. Hope you all have a great day. I'm going to have a great day. It looks like it's going to be really nice outside, so I'm excited about that, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.